Okay, this is the second part of the tutorial of how to build your database for your management information systems and business information systems module. So, just as a recap, we've created two tables um, and we've created one query. The two tables that we've created, one has a, uh, well, both of them have a primary key and one has a foreign key. And we've then created a relationship between those two by going into next uh, going into database tools going into relationships and creating the relationship through from that so i identified in the uh, primary key in one table and then the foreign key which is identified in another which is the unique identifier in another table and then from there we've created a query so that query is then being specific to uh, those students who are on computing so the next part of this is to create a form now ultimately if you were going to create a database and you're going to roll that out to staff and colleagues or or, or a business perhaps you wouldn't want them to enter the data in via the table like we did right at the very beginning you would want to create a form a user friendly form that they could enter their enter their information into um, which you could put on uh, restrictions on so they could only put certain amounts of data in it may have um, data validation in there so it only has um, set, set criteria they can enter in or it might have um, a, a specific number of characters that you're allowed to enter in at any time so if it was going to be a um, I don't know a data birth or something you could validate that so it came out in that particular format the reason why you could do that is um, because the data in your database is only um, your database is only as good as the data that's in it. So you need to make sure that um, any any data that goes in there is correct, or as correct as it can be. So first steps: looking at it again, we can look at the form form wizard, so we can go into there. Now, in order to create to enter information into a specific table itself, we can go into. I want to enter it into the students table. For this example, I want to push all of the information across, as you can see, and then next. I'm going to have, happy to do it within columns, then next. Now, name and convention, it's going to be a form, so frm underscore students, and then finish. So open, open the form, I'm happy to do that as well, to look at it. Great, so there's your form. Doesn't look particularly great, it is just the wizard's version, so you can go in and edit that and move it around. But just for this first part I'm going to show you how it works down at the bottom you can see um, it says last record new blank record so you can click on there and I can put a student ID so now I'm starting to enter data into my form so let's look at three four five one two course ID this is the bit where you could have a drop down so it could be specific drop down for um, the courses that you've got available but again, for this example, we know that one of the courses is 13, so we're going to tie it in there. So this is this is the um, part of the foreign key that's actually in the other table. So name, let's have um, Wendy, address, uh, be Sandy Fed. And then date of birth, we'll have um, 23rd to the 9th, I don't know, 56. Okay, down to the bottom move on to the next record and you'll see that it's saved because I now have some data in there so if I go into so yes you can see you see that's in there I've added another couple of records in earlier on just to sort of um, give the example a little bit more um, f uh, data so we can use it so I'm just going to close that down and prove that we've got Wendy in there I think we should have another Wendy in there anyway so we've got two one at Rathbone but that's the one that I've entered in. Wendy, it's Sandiford, 23rd of the 9th, 56, and she's on course 13 rather than 12. Great, so that's updated that table from the form. If I go into there, you can now see that that's running a query. Running a query now, computing Wendy, Rathbone. That's not the one that I entered in, but it shows that the, uh, that, um, the Wendy from Sandiford isn't there. So it just shows that distinct difference of data that's going into the tables. So... That's your form, so we can show that we're entering data into there. We'll do another one just to to show you again. Button at the bottom, new blank record, um, and let's put in Terry. Oh, sorry, put in student ID first. Um, eight seven six five four three. Course ID um, twelve. He's going to name is going to be Terry. And his dress is going to be let's put um, let's say uh, London. Whoops. 
London, date of birth, the um, 15th and 9th, 89. And then again, we'll click the next one along. Let's see, we've now got eight records in there. Shut that form down. Table course students. There's Terry in London, attached to um, course 12. Course 12, if I remember, is computing. So we should be able to close that off. Run the query for course in computing. And there's Terry. Yep, yeah, 15th of the 9th, 89. So that data has been put into the form, entered into the form, updating the table. And when I'm running the query, any additional computing students are being identified as we're going. So great, we've got that full functionality in there. However, going back to the form, it doesn't look particularly nice. It's not aesthetically pleasing. It's not. It's just a bog standard wizard's form. So, ribbon, top left-hand corner, go into the design view. Now in here, you can select. I'm just left-clicking as we're going away. And I can move things around, make things look a lot better. So form. Um, so um, new... New enrolled students, for example. So you should see that. So I've changed the title of it. Back into the design, I can change that. Application. Or however, whatever you want to do. Boxes are a little bit big on here, so I can move those around again. I'm just left clicking, I'm selecting it and left clicking. Name's a bit big. Might want to shrink it down a little bit to there so it looks a little bit more, uh, neater. You might want to move it around. You might want to have... So that was just shift, left click and shift and move both boxes together. You can do that or you can select them by left clicking and dragging around them. Either whichever whichever way. And then we can go and view it. And say, oh, right. So we're starting to design the form. Yeah. The only problem with that bit now is... Because we're going to design it, we can make it look better, so we'll do a little bit more, we could do a little bit more work on that. I was using the buttons down at the bottom here, which isn't really ideal. As part of the design part of this, left click and you can drag that down. On the toolbar up here, we've got things called buttons. So you can add your button in. And that'll open a wizard up. Now, I added a new record in down at the bottom. So record operations add new record so I can then go next I can either have it as text or I can have it as not change the pencil change the pencil whichever way you want to do next command um, we don't necessarily have to change this but um, I'm going to just change it anyway so I don't know um, add new uh, s record so add new, add new student record. You'll notice that I've put underscores in there. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this, but maybe good practice to get into if you ever want to develop databases going further. Um, the reason why I do it is because if you develop more code within Microsoft Access, you would you'd use the underscores because the SQL code would need the underscores because it doesn't understand the blanks. You see, you don't necessarily need to do it, but just for future, if you wanted to develop databases using something called structured query language, that's why I'm doing it. So I'm in the habit of doing that. So, moving on. Finish that. So now I have a button on my form. Ah, let's test it and see if it works. So, click on there. Oh, blank. Clears it as the button did down at the bottom before. Um, let's put uh, 987432. Name. Um, I don't know. Oh. Chris. Course ID, um, let's put them in 12. Address, Rye Hill, date of birth, 01, um, 06, um, 89. Great. I could do with the next button, couldn't I, really? Well, I'll leave that for you. You can add the next button on a next record or save. Even you could put a save button in. Again, you'll see all of those in the wizard. So I'm just going to click on this one. See that I've now got nine records in there. Oh, and there's Chris. Right, we'll prove it. Oops, should have saved that. So say yes, I've saved this, so that should be fine. So I'm going to go into table students. There's Chris Rye Hill. He's on course 12. And course 12, oh, that was computing. I can see in the drop down here now that Chris is in there. 
So that's great. So there is the link using the relationship that we did before through database tools. I'm going to close that down, close that down. I want to double check because I want to run my query, which specifically states it should be looking for any students who have been enrolled who are on computing. Double click. There's Chris. There's Rye Hill. There you go. 987432. Brilliant. So we're starting to add data in and we're now using forms. Great. Again, this is going to be specific to your data. So the data that I've either, I've either broken down for you or you've broken down yourselves or you're going to add in yourselves. Just follow these steps, these principles as you're going along and you'll be fine. So the last part of this, the last part is about displaying the data that you've analysed. So we've analysed we know that we've now got five students who are currently on the computing course. I wouldn't present this to management or teams or anything like that in that format. I'd want to make it look a little bit better. So we're going to use a report and I'm going to show you how to design that. So we'll close that down. We can use the report wizard for that. If you've got more confidence and you're comfortable at going on to do report design, please feel free to do that. It's entirely up to you. But just for this demonstration, I'm showing you what, how we're going to do it. So tables and queries, it gives you the option. Well, I'm being specific. So I want to see those students. I want to display and identify those students who are on the computing course. So I'm going to click the query computing. So that's that one there. Great. Uh, student ID, course ID, date of birth. I'm just going to put them all across for this example. Then next. So you can have um, display by course, by students. It's entirely up to you. I'll let you play around with those. But I'm just going to follow what it says. And you'll see what the results are at the end. Do you want to add any grouping levels? If you want to, that's absolutely fine. Um, but for my example, I'm not going to. I can have sort things in ascending or descending order. You might want to do it in student I ascending order, student ID. Whichever way you want to. Again, that's entirely up to you. Then next, whether I want it going to be whether what layout I want, what orientation I want, well that's fine. Just click on them and it'll change accordingly. But again, it's it's entirely up to you. But for this example, I'm going to leave the standard sentence and just show you what it does. So the next bit, name it. So naming conventions again, because this is a uh, this is a report. Naming convention is RPT. So we've got a report. Preview report. Yes, please. Finish. There we go. So it looks very similar to the form, um, almost exactly the same, but doesn't have the input. We need to design that and change it, but that's now showing everything that was in that query in a lovely report form that you can then go and print and take with you. So you can see how many are enrolled, you can even put calculations in there as well, but again, we can, do, we can look at those on an individual basis. So there you go, that's your report. However, it doesn't look that good. So I want to change it slightly. And again, it's the same as when we're looking at the queries, same as when we're designing um, the form. Now it's exactly the same with the report. We're going to go into Home and use that button over the top left-hand corner. So we've got View at the moment. So Report View, that's great. I'm in there as a design, so I want to move that over. So Student, student Cohort Computing. 2015 slash 2016 yeah something like that oops drop down the line let's just make it a bit bigger there we go wonderful so along like that so there we go student cohort you might want to shrink that box down a little bit I want to tighten it up so I can move these around I can do whichever I want that's going to be the date, so we've got a date set on already, page numbers, etc, etc. Let's have a look at that. There we go. Student cohort, computing, 2015, 16. You might want to put your name on there. You might want to change the name and conventions in here. So again, just click, sorry, just click on design view. You might want to change that to student I. It's exactly the same as we did in the report. And then view the report. There we go. And we're starting to design and develop your report. That's just the early stages. If you've got any questions with regards to that, or um, something a bit more specific to the database that you're developing, just drop us an email, rob.wraith at ncl-coll.ac.uk. See where we'll go from that. I'm more than happy to help you. If you want to develop it further and, and see where we'll go, again, just, just ask. Okay, so good luck with that bit. Again, as I say, any questions, just drop me a line. 
Rudder than that, I'll speak to you soon.